Hey guys, this is Junior. How you doing? I'm going to do the pre-trip for the engine compartment. We'll walk you through the whole thing and explain a little bit more about each compartment or each part of the, of the pre-trip on the engine compartment. All right. We're going to start off on the driver, on the passenger side. Over here, you're going to cover the general hoses. Make sure they're probably minus secure to both ends. No abrasion bulges or cuts and not leaking. Anything that has to do with rubber, again, no abrasion bulges or cuts, all right? Then we move down to the belt-driven alternator. Make sure it's properly mounted secure, not cracked, bent, or broken. All wires are connected, and the belt is not cracked or frayed, and the free play should be between half and three quarters of an inch. Now, how can you tell it's the alternator? A lot of people get it confused with, uh, I think, the air conditioning engine or motor, whatever. As long as you see that red wire connected to it or this one, then you should be good. That's, you know, that's the alternator, okay? So remember to look for that red wire in case you're not sure. So general hoses, belt-driven alternator. Then we go to the engine compartment. The engine compartment, again, you want to talk about the general hoses. Make sure they're properly mounted secure at both ends, no abrasion bulges or cuts, and they're not leaking. Now, when you do this, in this truck, there's not much, many hoses. There's a bunch over here, but as long as you say, I'm gonna look at my general hoses and kinda do this, you should be okay, you know what I mean? So, cause he'll know you're talking about all the hoses and you're just kinda waving out, you know? I'm gonna look at my general hoses, make sure they're properly mounted secure to both ends, no abrasion bulges or cuts, and they're not leaking. Then we're gonna go down to the gear driven air compressor, which is in here. You can't really see it. As long as you talk about it, point to it, you know, then he'll know that you know what you're talking about. And that's what they're looking for. They don't want you to guess where it's at and whatnot. You need to know where it's at, and if he asks you, then you tell him. So I'm gonna look at my gear driven air compressor, make sure it's properly mounted secure, not cracked, bent, broken, not leaking. From there, we move on to the gear driven power steering pump. How do we know it's the gear driven power steering pump? Because we look at a gearbox, we see the hoses coming out the, the gearbox that's leading to the gear driven power steering pump. All right, so again, you got the power steering reservoir, which goes down to the steering gearbox, which the steering gearbox, you got the hose going down to the gear-driven power steering pump. All right, gear-driven power steering pump. Make sure it's properly mounted secured, not cracked, bent, or broken, not leaking. We're gonna go up to the oil level, or I call it, dipstick, old dipstick, you're gonna be used to saying probably mine is secure, not cracked and broken. It's okay to go ahead and say it here, it's not a problem. So you look at the oil level, make sure it's probably mine is secure, not cracked and broken, or um, the old dipstick, I'm sorry. The old dipstick, make sure it's probably mine is secure, not cracked and broken. And then it's filled with manufacturer specifications. All right. And from there we move to the bell driven water pump. This one is a bell driven, as you can see, not all trucks have a bell driven, some have a gear driven. So make sure that you find out what kind of uh, water pump you guys have. So in this case, it's bell driven water pump. Make sure it's properly mounted secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not leaking. The belt is not cracked or frayed, and the free plate should be between half and three quarters of an inch. From there, we go up to the coolant reservoir. Make sure it's properly mounted secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not leaking, and it is filled with manufacturer specifications. All right? From there, we come down to the power steering reservoir. Make sure it's properly mounted secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, and it's not leaking. All right, from there, we go down to the, let me see if I can show you guys. Steering gearbox and hose, all right? So you're gonna say steering gear, gearbox and hoses or hose, and then make sure you talk about it separate. Even though you already talked about the general hoses, now you're being a specific about a part on the engine. So again, steering gearbox and hoses, 
look at my steering gearbox. Make sure it's properly mounted, secure, not cracked, under broken, not leaking. Look at my uh, steering gearbox hoses. Make sure they're properly mounted, secure to both ends. No abrasion bulges or cuts, and not leaking. Again, rubber, no abrasion bulges or cuts. But look at my steering linkage. All right. Now the steering linkage, they want you to talk. I mean, point at all the parts. All right. So whenever you talk about it, I'm trying to make sure I get some good lighting over here. All right, steering linkage. Make sure you point at all three parts or the whole thing. All right, steering linkage. Make sure it's properly mounted, secured, not cracked and broken, and it has no missing castle nuts or cotter pins. Which the cotter pins are these little things right here. All right, so just make sure you say no missing castle nuts or cotter pins on the steering linkage. All right, then from there, we go to the spring hangers. Spring hangers are these right here. You got one in the front, one in the back. So make sure you talk about them both. Say, look at my spring hangers. Make sure they're properly mounted secured at both ends. So spring hangers probably mounted secured. Not correct, been broke. I'm sorry, spring hangers. Spring hangers, properly mounted, secured at both ends. Not cracked, bent, or broken. All right. I'm gonna look at my leaf springs, which are on the spring hangers. Make sure it's properly mounted, secured at both ends. Not cracked, bent, or broken. None missing, and none are shifted. So make sure you say that none missing, none are shifted. Again, leaf springs. Make sure it's prop make sure they're properly mounted secure to both ends. Not cracked under broken, none missing, none shifted. U bolts. Make sure they're properly mounted secure, not cracked under broken, none missing. Shock observer. Make sure they're prop it's properly mounted secure to both ends. Not cracked under broken, not leaking. Look at my brake chamber and hose. Brake chamber and hose. Again, you're gonna talk about it separate. Look at my brake chamber. Make sure it's properly mounted secure. Not cracked and broken, not leaking. Look at my brake hose. Make sure it's properly mounted secure, not cracked and broken. I'm sorry. Look at my brake hose. Make sure it's properly mounted secure to both ends. No abrasion bulges or cuts and not leaking. It's going a little too fast there. <laughs> All right, remember, rubber, hoses, both ends. I'm gonna look at my slack adjuster and push rod. Make sure it's properly mounted secure, not cracked when the broken. With the brakes release and pull by hand, the push rod shouldn't move more than one inch. Should not move more than one inch. With the brakes released and pull by hand, push rod should not move more than one inch. All right. Then from there, we're going to look at the brake lining. All right. Make sure it's properly mounted secure, not cracked, bent, and broken, free of oil and debris. Friction material should not be worn densely thin. Okay. Now, when you do the the brake lining. As long as you talk about it, you're doing this, and you're pointing in here looking like this, and you're talking to the examiner, he'll know what you're talking about, that you're really talking about the brake lining, and not just, hey, you know, pointing down there like you don't know what you're talking about. So, again, look at my brake lining. Make sure it's properly mounted secure, not cracked when the broken, free of oil debris, friction material should not be worn dangerously thin. Okay? So again, friction material is not worn dangerously thin, should not be. It's not worn dangerously thin, actually. All right, so remember, brake lining. Probably mine is secured, not cracked under broken. Free of oil and debris. 
friction material is not worn dangerously thin. Tire. The steer tire. Make sure you say steer tire. It's not just any tire. It's a steer tire. Make sure it's probably minor secure. No abrasion bulges or cuts to either the, the sidewall or the tread. There is the tread is no less than four thirty seconds of an inch. It should be filled to manufacturer specifications, and I would use an air gauge to check that. Okay. No less than four thirty seconds of tread left, or tread is no less than four thirty seconds of an inch. All right. Rim. Make sure it's proper minor secure, not cracked been broken. No illegal holes or welds. They have no unauthorized welds, which no illegal holes or welds is the same difference. Lug nuts, make sure that you point at them all. Make sure that you say, my, all my lug nuts are properly mounted secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, none missing, no rust trails or powder residue, and there's no cracks around the bolt holes. Hub seal, this is the hub seal. The axle seal is actually on the drives and then on trailer tandems, uh, on the trailer tires. So hub seal, probably minor secure, not cracked into broken, and it's not leaking, no missing mountain bolts, and it is filled to manufacturer specification. All right, again, I'm gonna show you guys the way I do it and I'll tell you why. All right, so again, we go to the driver's side, the passenger side. We just talk about the, the general hoses and the belt driven alternator. Pretty simple. We come back over here. General hoses. Now over here we talk about the gear driven air compressor and the gear driven power steering pump. Then we talk about the old level, the belt driven water pump coolant reservoir if you notice we kind of go up in an angle all right we going up and then after that we come down here to the coolant uh, the power steering reservoir what's below the power steering reservoir the steering gearbox steering gearbox and hose what's on the steering gearbox and hose the steering linkage all right What's parallel to the steering linkage? Well, you got the spring hangers on both ends. Then you got the leaf springs on the, after that. Then you got the U-bolts. Then you got the shock observer. Then you come out. You got the brake chamber and hose. Then you got the slack adjusting push rod. Then you finish it off by saying brake lining, brake drum, steer tire, the rim, lug nuts, hub seal. All right, now that's the reason I have it like that is because you can't forget anything. If you look at the paper, I don't know what paper you guys may be working with, but if you look at something up here, then you talk about this, then that, you're gonna jump around too much. Over here, over here, over here. But if you have a, a, a flow or a system where you go up like this, you cover all the ones that are next to each other up and like this, which is the steering gearbox and um, the gear driven air compressor, gear driven power steering pump, oil level, belt driven water pump, coolant reservoir. Then you just step it out a little bit and you come to the power steering reservoir, steering gearbox and hose. Then you got the steering linkage then what's parallel to the steering linkage? You have the spring hangers and then the leaf springs. What's on the leaf springs? The U-bolts. What's next to the U-bolts? The shock observer. Then you come out. Bring yourself out to the brake chamber and hose. Then you got the slack adjuster on the brake chamber. Then you got the brake lining and then the brake drum then you steer tire rim lug nuts hub seal you can't go wrong with that you know if there's if you do it this way or if you find a system that it works for you guys 
you cannot miss anything so whenever you're going through it you already know what what's next this is the way i learned it this is the way my students learn it i hope it helps you guys again this is a freightliner i don't know what kind of truck you guys will be working on but make sure you ask where all the parts are before you start you know implementing a system for you guys all right i hope you guys like it comment share subscribe all right